go through is how to flag the critical issues and how do you cover all the usual points without wasting time as well. So we're going to go through all of that in the next few exercises. So I want you to have a go at this. Um, what do you want to know when assessing this patient? Imagine this 50 year old patient with rib fractures post a fall, past history of COPD. I've, I've tried to make it simple by saying there's no other traumatic injury, just the rib fractures, um, just to get across my point. Uh, prolonged intubation in ICU, will require a tracheostomy in theater. Uh, and the examiner asks you, what do you want to know in your assessment? So I want everyone to have a go at thinking, what would they what would they want to know on this, this patient's assessment? Before I go to someone, just to realize that, you know, this is obviously a very complicated assessment. Any ICU patient has so much you need to talk about on top of what the anesthetic history might be. Um, but just have a go at finding out what those critical issues are. Uh, so as part of my uh, pre-anesthetic consultation, um, I'd like to start with uh, what was his initial, so he's, he's intubated. I'd like to know what yep. was his initial airway grade. Yes. Were there any significant concerns over the airway? Um, I'd like to know what intervention he's had thus far and what are his uh, ventilation settings? Mm -hmm. Has he had any issues with um, developing ARDS uh, or any other ventilatory associated issues? Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to consult with my ENT surgeon uh, and discuss our plan, particularly around the siting of the tracheostomy and uh, airway management. Um, I'd also like to know of any other issues he's had in ICU uh, that would potentially in, uh, in, impact my anaesthetic management. That's great. Essentially, I think you've picked up on a lot of the really important points. So just the first bit of that, I, I think it's great what you did because you, you went straight to what I would want to know most about in this assessment, but sometimes you're not really sure what exactly the examiner is asking. And so, you know, we're, we're here to try to make sure that we are getting gradual points and just making sure we're very thorough what we say. So I. I know that going through a full history is time consuming, so what can I say to hit the critical issues? I, I say something along the lines of, look, in addition to my usual assessment, because you know that any, you know, BTY can, or even any resident can do a normal assessment, that can't be a point of discrimination between you and the other candidates. So I make, make note of that, make mention of that, but then I'd specifically want to know what are these points of difference. So level of respiratory support, and you mentioned exactly, very rightly, um, you know, the parameters that you might want to know. FiO2, especially if they're using um, diathermy in the airway, um, you know, pressure support, PEEP levels, if they've got ARDS. Is this patient a difficult airway? And I've just added their fasting status and coagulation profile, because that often makes a difference for me about how I'll, how I'll proceed. And I remember getting asked this question by one of my examiners and um, prior to the actual exam and just going through every single little bit of an assessment that I would do. And it was very thorough, but I could just see the disappointment on her face as I was going through this in excruciating detail when really all she wanted to know was, was the stuff that really differentiated this case from every single other case. Just to talk back about uh, you know, varying the phrasing. Examiners are human and they hear so many of the same statements. So to be able to say something slightly different and just vary your language, I think is useful. Um, you know, obviously, there's not the most important thing. Your content and your presentation of the facts is most important. But you know, I might say words as, as well as my usual assessment on top of my usual assessment, further to, in addition to, aside from, besides, whatever it is, you can vary your phrasing in whatever setting to make it a bit more interesting. Let's go through the actual cases now. So uh, talk through this case. In addition to your usual assessment, what do you want to know about a 50-year-old female for total thyroidectomy for a large goiter? What do you want to know in assessment? So this is a 50-year-old female for thyroid surgery with a large goiter. And in addition to my usual assessment, I would like to assess the critical airway issues, specifically functional. Uh, so I would like to know about current dyspnea, stridor, and any positional changes. I'd like to also review imaging to assess uh, current airway diameter and any metabolic component of her thyroid disease. When, when I think of this case, I, I, obviously there's a mass there, and the mass can affect very, very important structures, especially when it's in the neck or retrosternally. So I, I, I globally talk about respiratory compromise, and then I would go through exactly what you said with the respiratory compromise, then think about vascular compromise and, and all the low pressure structures around that area and what they would do and all the you know, history factors, investigation factors. But the first level of that is knowing what is the, you know, the end point of the problem of mass effect. Um, I also really care that the patient is euthyroid and you know that's one of those things I'll always check because a thyroid storm would be a very, very 
you know, tragic event or crisis in the, in the operation. And then o over the last few years, I've noticed that mal the, whether it's malignant or not, it's really made a big difference to ha what my, you know, what my uh, stress levels are for this case, whether there's going to be a mass that I can push past uh, with a tube or a mass that might cause tracheomalacia later. So those are really the things that I want to I want to look for in this case. Think about this case: a Peds tonsillectomy, five-year-old for tonsillectomy. What do you want to know in assessment? Um, and just with this, it, the fact that it's a Peds case is obviously Peds is niche enough that you would probably talk about your full assessment. But um, in in real life and in the exam, it seems to be that it seems to me that Peds cases are often, you know, uh, I guess coincidental with a few other things. So talk to, talk to your partner now. What do you want to know on assessment after your general, general pediatric, pediatric assessment? For my usual pediatric assessment, I'd be specifically looking at symptoms related to the tonsils. Mm -hmm. So any obstructive sleep apnea, um, any snoring, any other respiratory symptoms or limitation of their daily activities. Mm -hmm. um, I would be looking at any previous uh, anaesthetics that they've had, um, any difficulty with intubation due to extreme tonsils. Mm -hmm. I do a thorough assessment of the airway, looking at the size of the tonsils and likelihood of difficulty um, ventilating the, the patient, mm -hmm. and also the compliance with the child and any need for pre-meds. Yeah, sounds good. And again, everyone will have a slightly different angle on this, and that's completely fine because really, what you're trying to do is make a make your best guess at what you believe this is is most likely in this situation. I've just made it broad here, so often these kids will be coming in with OS, OSA, repeated respiratory infections, and in a viva, there's always some kind of congenital issue to make it a bit more complex for you as well. But everything you said was completely valid. Next case, cesarean section, 35 year old.